Hello and thank you again for joining this channel. During this remote pair programming session, you will see a lot of interesting topics from how to structure your test based on domain, how to look on tests, different types of tests based on domain or on programmer tests. So we got a bit into the quadrants of tests. And also you will see us discussing about other topics like remote pair programming, how to do that well, how to use an IDE that supports remote pair programming. And if you don't want to use all this time to watch the full remote pair programming video, you can always watch the excerpts that you'll find on my channel. So enjoy and as always, have fun coding. Hello and welcome to another episode of Remote Pair Programming. I have with me uh, Damien Klinert and he's um, proposed a very interesting problem today. We're going to do game of life in a browser and I'm going to let him uh, introduce himself a bit. Then we're going to go deeper into what we are going to do today. So hi, Damien. Ah, hi, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate uh, having a chance to pair program with you. And the coolest thing is we can actually teach others as well and help them maybe. Um, so I've been working remotely for a company for the last three years, basically full time. And during this time, um, my team is mostly doing pair programming, which is why I find uh, your show so nice because it really thinks about how can you do the pair programming like in a team. Mm -hmm. And um, I have some experience with it. I use it almost daily. Um, and although my personal favorite IDE is not is uh, IntelliJ, <laughs> yeah. uh, for the pair programming, um, there's VS Code, which has this live share uh, extension. And I found that it actually revo uh, revolutionizes the way I do pair programming because it allows very quick switching, almost as if you were sitting in the same location. And um, since I use it all the time in my work, I, I thought, uh, why not just show it? Um, yeah. And one of my favorite programs to write is this Conway's Game of Life cutter that you'll be explaining shortly, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it so much because with very simple code, you can make something that is quite complex. So I'm I'm a bit fan of big fan of that, basically. All right, so let's go a bit into what uh, the Game of Life is for people who don't know it. Um, I'm going to switch to Wikipedia. Conway's Game of Life is a concept that mathematician Conway, because it's his creation, started uh, somewhere in the 70s, in 70. Um, and it's about a system that has a two-dimensional infinite universe with cells that are basically squares, and they live in this universe and they have iterations where all these rules apply in the same time. So you have, let me zoom in, you have all these rules that apply in the same time. You have cells that are alive or dead depending on the number of neighbors. You may have a cell with few than two live neighbor dying by underpopulation you can have uh, cells with two or three live neighbors live on. So that's their, the ideal situation, or the ideal um, environment for them. Then you have a live cell with more than three live neighbors dies and that's overpopulation. And then you have a dead cell with exactly three, uh, with um, more than three live neighbors. No, sorry. So you have a dead cell will become alive when you have exactly three live neighbors. So that's rebirth or reproduction or whatever. So we have iterations. That means you have a system that will reproduce itself to the infinity. And because of that, you start having these types of structures like this one on the right, the glider gun, or we can see some other types of structures in the bottom here, the block that's still life or beehive or all the others that are not affected at all by the, the rules. You have oscillators that have 
only two states and they oscillate from one to the other or three states or four or more but anyway they they come in a circle and then you have what they call spaceships so things that move around space because always some cells will be generated let's say in this case in the bottom right and cells will start dying in the uh, top left and it's very interesting because it respects the Turing concepts uh, so we, you can use Kone's game of life to to solve problems as with the Turing machines so that's about the game and now let's go back to the browser and I'll let if you explain a bit uh, what we're gonna do it's visual studio code i tried it a bit it didn't work for me but now you made some magic and it works so <laughs> what's so nice about it with remote pairing um yeah i think what um <clears throat> so when this came ar before this uh, vs code came about i think um the way i would pair program with my colleagues was that usually we would have like someone has the ide and then we write the code and then the person pushes the code when you switch we would use screen sharing most of the time and then the other person starts the screen share right and there's quite some friction in the switching of the screen sharing and like the ide and checking out the code and so on um, so what this led to is us not changing as frequently as we would do when uh, when we were sitting in a normal office. Um, so when this VS Code thing came about, uh, came around, we tried it, and immediately we noticed that it allows um, for us to have way quicker switching between the people. Um, and so what it does for us is it basically creates a session in which we um, many people can join. I've done sessions with up to like ten people. Um, and that worked also as, uh, quite well, although I'm realizing I'm doing a little bit of marketing now, which I don't <laughs> intend to do anyway. Um, as I said, it's not my IDE of choice, but for the pair program, it works well. Um, so what's cool about it is we can, first of all, see the cursor of the other person. So mm -hmm. if I select something yeah. uh, that I want to talk about, you can see that I'm highlighting it. Um, it also, like if I add like a compilation error here or something, you get the same compile error. So both of us can see that in our IDE and investigate. Um, you can also see that at the bottom here, we have this uh, test runner uh, running, which basically is a shared terminal. So all the code lives on my machine. The tests are being run on my machine. Um, yet you can still see all the all the output of the test running, which I think is quite cool because you can make changes and you, we both can see the same like tests running basically. Um, and yeah, it takes a while because of the screen sharing. My computer is a little bit uh, overloaded, um, but generally this is quite fast. Um, the other nice thing is I can also share servers. So on my computer, I have a watch task, which is basically taking all of this, bundling these things, compiling them, and then putting them onto a server, which is living on port one, two, three, four. And I managed to share it with you basically. And so now you can go to your server. So if uh, we go yep, back, browser. this is the, my browser, this is the server and it lives on your machine, but I can call it through the ID, right? Yeah, exactly. You can see it via like uh, port forwarding, basically some internal magic. The interesting bit is if you now go um, to your uh, editor and you make a change, um, for, to like the positions, I think you would go to the index.ts file. Yeah, well, okay, let's go to the index.ts file. Yeah, and yeah you can see some coordinates there. So if you change some of the coordinates. So this would be, I don't know, 115. Yep. And if you go back to your browser with a little bit of time, you can see the changes reflecting. So what's really cool is all the building and compilation happens on my machine, yet you can still see it. And that is true for the tests and also the results. Uh, which means we can both always test and we don't have to use screen sharing because we can fluently switch. Mm -hmm. And this really enables this strong style pairing idea where uh, there's one driver and one navigator and we fluently switch all the time between the two roles um, and it's quite easy to do. There's one really cool feature, um, which is the following. So uh, a big source of friction would be if I would always tell you now go to this file and then go to this file and so on. Um, luckily, we don't need to do this. On the left-hand side, you see my name with a little mm -hmm. circle. And if that circle is um, not filled, basically, um, it means that 
uh, you just scroll around and you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. But if it is um, a filled circle, it means you're following me. So now I can click onto some file and you can see the IDE jumping around and following my cursor, which is really nice if, uh, for the driver because the driver then can type and the navigator will always see what the driver is. And I have exactly the same feature. Um, sometimes this leads to really weird situations when both of us follow each other around. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it might it, it gets stuck in like a crazy loop sometimes but let's not worry about this too, too mm -hmm. much for now uh, but it's also good because you can do parallel things so maybe sometimes you don't want to do driver navigator you just want to do setup or something and we can parallelize and it makes things faster so i can do part of it you can do part of it and instead of taking 10 minutes maybe it takes five so <laughs> i think yeah, that's, that's also true. nice or repeated kernel things. So sometimes we would find, you know, like if you do a refactoring or something, uh, you need to go to all these places or the linter is not happy or whatever, then you can kind of like paralyze working on the <laughs> on the files. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Good point. Okay, so let's talk a bit about what is the setup here, what's the the coding environment, uh, because you, you made it, you're its creator, so... <laughs> what's what what's here yeah so um i kind of like the browser as an environment for running programs just because it's very ubiquitous right like everyone has this browser basically um, and if we build with it that means we can easily share our creations with others we can just put them on a web server or something and then someone can try them out um, there's many other rendering frameworks uh, that we could have used but then this involves like compilation and like pushing the executable somewhere um, so with this one, uh, we can quite easily just experiment and debug things in the browser as well. Um, since we wanted to give, I think, not just JavaScript a try, um, but also TypeScript, um, we have some kind of magical setup where there's a, com a compiler in the middle, uh, which will always take our TypeScript and it will compile it to JavaScript because the browser doesn't understand TypeScript. And then it will take this JavaScript, bundle it all into a file because JavaScript still doesn't really have like a module system. So it makes a big, like a massive file, one index.js file, which it then chunks into like the HTML pa page and then all the code runs. So luckily, thanks to all the tooling that we have, we don't need to write everything in one JavaScript file. Instead, we have a compiling step, which does all of this for us, almost like you know, a bytecode output, although the bytecode is JavaScript <laughs> in mm -hmm. this case. Um, I think that's the most important part. Um, we're using like a, a tool called Parcel uh, for this, which I haven't used myself that much, but the cool thing is it has almost no configuration. So setting this up was quite easily, uh, quite easy. However, it might be that we run into problems, which <laughs> then I don't know entirely how uh, we resolve it, but finger crossed that we don't run into problems. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's programming, then, you never know, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we're also using for the testing, we use the uh, Jest testing tool. That's just because I use it at work and I know it quite well. Um, we have an example for a test case here, how it looks like. So it's the BDD flavor of writing tests. We have describe it and expectations. Um, currently, the tests are failing because two and three together are not eight. We can go to that as soon when we start the coding. And then there's one other important file. Uh, and you can see there's like an add function, which is more of an example, just to have something running. And there is an index.js function, um, which contains all the code for the browser, which is about like the browser APIs, right? So we ideally, we get to something on the screen at the end of this session, which would be really cool. But I am i don't remember those API calls for the browser all the time. So I try to put a very little structure um, that is quite typical for like game loops and so on. So when this comes up in the browser we have an initializer function which does some stuff and most importantly it gets an html canvas element um, it gets a rendering context for 2d operations um, then it does things to make retina uh, retina screens look nice not that important mm -hmm. um, but lastly it goes into this like update loop and so this update loop is called for every single frame so every time that your browser uh, will refresh basically the the page um, it will call this function, this update function, almost like a callback. Um, you can then do a computation um, and see like what you want to update on the screen. Um, we cal calculate the time that has passed just because I expected that we might use this as well. 
and then we go into the render loop and all we do is we make some rectangles and there's like uh, just the outlines of a rectangle which we make and then the fill rect so this is a very typical pattern for game programming where you have like a, an update loop so every time a new um, you know display uh, you need to provide a new frame for the browser um, this render function is going to be called and then we can set everything up and the way that I think about implementing this, or if you've seen the examples on Wikipedia, uh, you can see that it's mostly filled and not filled rectangles. So I'm hoping that with these two things, we should get along quite well and actually be able to render something in the browser. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry for the long uh, talking. No, it was very before. interesting. No. Okay, so let's see what uh, what are we doing. Should we start from the tests, from the specs? Yeah, um, so I would suggest just because I'm more familiar with the language, basically, with TypeScript, that I start as the driver, meaning I'm going to be typing, but I cannot come up with any ideas on my own, although I can have, of course, opinions. But you can treat me as a smart keyboard, I guess, right? Where you give me mm -hmm. voice commands and I try to turn those voice commands as smartly as I can into code. Um, sometimes as it is with, you know, uh, <laughs> under, like with these things like Siri and so on, they sometimes go a bit wrong, so I'm the same. <laughs> um, and basically you're the navigator, um, and that, which means you say what we're going to write. And then we switch this role every now and then, but we'll start with you navigating. Um, and lastly, I always had problems with the separation of driver and navigator. I could never remember which is which until someone told me where the metaphor comes from, which is driving a car. Exactly. So the person, yeah. yeah, exactly. So the driver is steering while the navigator holds the map and says kind of where to go. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the idea. Uh, and I think it also applies to anywhere where you need to pair, where you have a bit of complexity, like uh, airplanes. Uh, you know, you have a driver and a navigator. Well, you have a commander and a, I don't know what's <laughs> someone else. Yes. Um, yeah, that makes first, sense. Uh, first officer. Yeah, commander and first officer. So it's the same thing. Okay. Um, so let's go back a bit uh, on, on Conway's game of life, and uh, since we we'll start working, uh, start typing, I'd like to explain a bit how I, I try I like to, to start off with this um, the idea is that you have th there are so many ways to start uh, Conway's game of life and uh, I saw I think 18 20 20 something ways of starting it because of facilitating many code retreats one way is to start with the rules that's the, the typical approach uh, there's there are other ways starting with a cell starting with a universe and so on what I like to do is I like to start with examples and since here it says examples of patterns uh, we can start over with some of these examples and to try to introduce the notions one by one and we have some design elements design notions like you you have a cell you have universe you have uh, the um, uh, the life, the death, uh, you have generation, and we. I'd like to tell to start taking them one by one. Uh, and the simplest thing is to start to see life. So what I'd like to do is to start only with life so you have life like you have this square you the block how it's called and after a tick and tick means you apply all the rules the the generation will be identical with the initial generation nice i like that approach because it's almost like acceptance tests right so we kind exactly, of define yeah. all the terminology and then we go on and implement it i like that mm -hmm. that sounds cool um do you have a preferred like like file name or where you would like to put it uh i don't care now i would just start with the tests explaining how this is uh, this square behaves so Okay, how about I create a file and call it maybe acceptance.test.ts? I think that yeah. one should 
can be fixed uh, picked up exactly yeah because that's what we're doing we're starting to create our explicit knowledge about how we accept this business terms I'm just gonna fix this like test case here quickly um, because otherwise we have the failing test all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, of course. And so now I think that should pass. And yeah, the format that we use with Jest is basically we, we describe something, we have to find a name for that. Um, and I'll leave that up for you to decide on the name. I'm just putting like the, um, the boilerplate code here. And then we have some kind of test case. Um, so what should we name these these tests and like the the block around it? Let's give let's start using examples and I like this idea of trying to tell stories about the the game of life and mm -hmm. just use the name from their uh, block. So okay. we only use names from the business domain. And the business domain of Colonial's Game of Life is around here, explained in this uh, document page of Wikipedia. So doc is a domain name. Um, we have then uh, the tick, that's mm -hmm. also a domain name. So if I search up, um, says, uh, let's search a bit more. The first place where it, is explained so it says like that the first generation is creating by applying the above rule simultaneously to every cell in the seed birth or death occurs simultaneously to the de and the discrete moment at which this happens is sometimes called a tick so nice. that's why i would say a block would remain a block after a tick that sounds really good so uh, i picked examples for now yeah that's good the, uh, mm -hmm. thing? okay so a block um remains would you use uppercase or lowercase i don't do you care. mind yeah i don't care it's, <laughs> okay it's fine uh, a block remains a block after it i'm gonna use uppercase or like the the title case just because um it's like domain terms and almost yeah. like special mm -hmm. names after one tick i like that all right so now we need to define the block um you can either define it something very simple like a string that sometimes i do that's the simplest approach even though it sounds weird mm -hmm. or you could start explaining it like um like you've done it here in the rectangles i don't know what would be best mm -hmm. what do you think? i'm not that good at like parsing and taking apart the strings mm -hmm. so how about we try both approaches we begin with uh, one thing i have in mind and then we use another thing um, all right uh, we, and we see which one is better maybe um, yeah okay so i think what i had in mind is basically to kind of create a class which is or have a class that have a method which might be like uh, spawn cell or something so mm -hmm. this is almost like the, the world or universe i'm not entirely sure what a good name would be and we have a spawn cell we can give it coordinates and then we can in this test i'm thinking about like making an instance of the class universe spawning separate cells um and then afterwards like checking that the certain cells are alive if that makes sense mm -hmm. okay let's do that um since i had the idea how about you give this a try with typing and you just do some boil dummy code and then we can yeah. turn it into typescript yes so. so this is very similar to Java. So I think what you use is like a const or something. So you would say const world or universe. I'm not sure what which term um, do you like more. As here, I see that there's universe around. Uh, this is how it's explained. I would use this as a domain term. Excellent. So we have uh, everywhere you have an universe. Yeah, cool. You need. <laughs> yeah yep let's use universe so we make a universe and you can make it similar to how you would make it in java so new universe i guess okay yep so this is going to fail um basically so let's create oh universal i think it says <laughs> yeah so okay. in typescript we have the class uh, keyword so if you could just go above in line two or something and add a class uh, universe and then you use the um, square brackets not square sorry um, curly braces 
Yep, that should already make the well, combination enough, pass. I guess. Yep. Um, I think then we can see the test running in the background now. Yeah, you can see it in the bottom. Mm, yeah, it takes a lot of time because of uh, my machine being overloaded with the screen sharing asset. So usually this would be milliseconds. <laughs> mm. Apologies for that. Maybe you could uh, we could close that. Uh, yeah, let me. Do you want to? Sh well, for the it makes sense to record it for you for the guests, right? But I can maybe leave the Zoom session for now. Yeah, but just I will stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Let's see how how my, if this has like an a, an improvement or offers an improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Since we have the universe, um, I would like to call like a method on it, which could be like spawn cell or something. So, how do you write this? It's just is it like typical JavaScript? Yeah, it's almost like typical JavaScript, but you leave away the function keyword. Ah, okay. So the, the the syntax is the same otherwise. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess if we go into the test now and we call like universe dot spawn cell. Okay. Oh, yep. Okay. Looks like auto completion is working. Excellent. <laughs> um, then we need to give it some coordinates, like an X and a Y, for example. I guess. To the um, cell, you mean? Yeah, to the cell. So let's say the first one might be X and the second one might be Y. So do you want to have variables or do you want to give it directly? Uh... Let's use some, uh, just to get something to work, I guess let's use zero, zero, and then we just make the four next to each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it know how to generate or? Mm, it's not IntelliJ, unfortunately. So it's not that <laughs> smart. All right. Okay. So you put X there and Y and to put the type, you do a colon after the X and you say number. And that's your type annotation right there. And now this should hopefully run a little bit faster. We'll see, I think. It still takes a long time. Seven seconds. <laughs> hmm. um, 15 seconds. Well, half the time already. You yeah. <laughs> are. Okay, cool. I guess we need four cells, right? Not just zero, zero, um, yeah. but kind of like zero, one, one, zero, and one, one. So that would make our block. Mm -hmm. And so that should obviously pass. So then I guess we have some kind of tick function. <clears throat> so I would leave it up to you to now continue and I can do the driving. So maybe we can flip. Okay, so... We could ask universe to tick. Mm -hmm. So we need another function tick on the universe. Like... Something like this? Yes, it uh, doesn't need to do to have any parameters. It's just a, a, a parameters function. Mm -hmm. It needs to take all the all the cells. So we need to record internally the state of the cells in the universe class. So when we do spawn cell, I'd like to have a collection that remembers all the the cells that were spawned. So let's mm -hmm. do at line 3.45. Uh, let's create a collection and then in the spawn cell, let's add all the cells. I see. Okay. So there's like some kind of collection. Mm, I'm just gonna uh, boilerplate this, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, so collection dot add something, I guess. Mm. What do you want to add to the collection? X and Y for now. X Okay, so as both a of them as a tuple. Okay, so we don't really have tuples in uh, JavaScript or TypeScript, but what we can use is uh, arrays, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So this collection add x and y. So this is obviously failing compilation. Mm -hmm. The constructor in Java uh, in TypeScript you can in JavaScript even you can define like this. Um, and now we can say something like. Um, this dot collection now we can initialize it so this would probably be a list i guess an empty list mm -hmm. since it's javascript we have to use push and similar to how you would do it in c sharp or java we would say that there is a collection um, and the type of the collection 
would actually be what would it be a list of lists of numbers i guess yes so i think a list of list of number number or something um property zero <laughs> Okay, I'll have to look that up uh, in, a, in the browser uh, in a second, but maybe, well, we can always cheat. This is like the magical, <clears throat> I, want, I don't want to deal with the types right now kind of thing. You give it the any type. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think we can then def refine our ideas, right? Mm -hmm. But let's begin by uh, doing this, okay? Yep, so we push it to some collection. And then in the tick, we just I'd like to return the same collection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so return this dot collection. Well, now we need to have uh, an assert or verify or something. An mm -hmm. assert probably that would say we need to check that the cell, the cells. Mm -hmm. I see. So like cells or something. Expect that cells, yeah, would be the same with something that we need to create. Uh, we need to create our own structure, so as an uh, expected. So just say to um, expect. I don't know how it is to be, to to be equal to contain. I don't know, and then right. we need an ex um, actual uh, an expected mm -hmm. variable there. Mm -hmm that would need to be like zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. Right, right, I see what you're saying. So I'm trying to make this now with a bit, little bit of indentation. So zero, 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 one, one, zero, <clears throat> and one, one. Oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, do we care about the ordering of this? Uh, like in the order in which they are represented? Uh, I think it no, because we are expecting to contain, it's not important, no. Okay, um, so then I'm using the syntax a little bit uh, 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 wrong. So I think what we would do then is to contain, um, and we do one to contain for each of these lines, basically. Um, so I'm going to rewrite the same thing that we just mm -hmm. wrote cells to contain zero zero and then we want this line four times probably some <laughs> some candidate for refactoring uh, and we do one and one okay conway's game of life is defined that uh, we apply all the rules simultaneously so the generation the next generation after tick will appear in the same time so it's it's not important the order of how we show it. It's important that we have a collection and we compare the two. Yeah, that makes sense. So I can see that we have expected value zero zero and received array uh, with things. And this is because probably I'm using this matcher uh, incorrectly. So let's see. Oh, let's see what we're doing. So we're pushing this array in the collection which looks like the right thing to do. Um, so we can always just have a quick look, you know, like like real professionals using console lock <laughs> of what we have here. Had we, uh, like IntelliJ, we could do debugging, but I don't think this is working that easily. Oh, I haven't set it up at least. Uh, expected value, let's see, so we have this thing. Um, so it's probably the wrong matcher. Let me look this up in the background. Um, just matchers to contain is the one we are using. <laughs> to contain equal, okay. So when you want to check that an item is in an array, <clears throat> so it might have problems contain equal okay let's try to contain equal um it might have problems with the fact that it's like an array in an array because sometimes the javascript um things do crazy things with arrays mm -hmm. but i like this approach um a lot because we begin with this uh, domain and it's kind of we go outward in right so we begin with a top level terminology yeah 
and I'd like to move away from the technical implementation more and more mm -hmm. as we refactor out. Yeah, that's awesome. So the tests are passing now. So I was using the wrong matcher. So with this matcher, we can see the test working. Mm -hmm. I think we haven't seen it fail. So let me uh, be malicious, right? And just uh, make it fail just to see it in both states, red and green. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, how would you like to continue? Would you like to refactor something or add something new? That's clearly a lot of things to refactor, but I'd like to continue though to add something new to add uh, another structure that now would also involve creating a new cell or uh, or making a cell die. Th those are the two options. Uh -huh. um, so if we go back to our document from Wikipedia, there's uh, there are these oscillators, so three in a, a row to three in a column that you can see changing i this involves also creating and dying so it's too much as a step for me mm -hmm. so that's why i would just do something that dies so it's something simpler like you have a uh, one cell mm -hmm. in an universe and after tick nothing is left nice i see that's a good idea um how would you like to test that nothing is left? Because we have an infinite board, right? So on an infinite board, I can imagine um, check. It's impossible to check that all the cells are dead. Yeah, exactly. So you you're, you want to mm -hmm. expect here. Sorry. So what you do in your uh, in your take, you return the collection of all the cells. Mm -hmm. So. You might you have two options here. You can have an option of creating a an object that says empty universe, mm -hmm. and then you'd like let universe deal with this issue. Mm -hmm. You have the second option of saying, "Look, I have uh, let give me my your cells, and I'll search the count," which for me sounds like inappropriate intimacy. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a good idea. For starters, it works, but I'd still like to go to something that uh, at the end won't won't have won't get data. So it would be just tell and don't ask. Mm -hmm. Here I I already don't like this thing that I will return this uh, the collection. It's good for starters, but I'd like to move away from this. So the simplest approach is just to have a universe class that's derived from universe that would always be empty mm -hmm. um, or something similar with the same the same idea but something similar where you have whenever you create a new class universe it will be empty mm -hmm. okay that makes sense so by beginning uh, by the start could we also make it immutable so that basically mm -hmm. a tick does return a new kind of universe so instead yeah. of just returning the cells returns a new universe yeah we could do that though we have the concept of generation so if we look back uh, so what i would argue is that we need a new universe if we look at generation in the I'm in wikipedia i think you don't see it but I will explain a bit. <laughs> it says that the first generation is created by applying the four rules simultaneously. Each generation is a pure function of the preceding one. So I don't think that you have a new universe, you have a new mm -hmm. generation. So universe oh, is see. just one, it's just like a singleton and all of the generations are immutable. Ah, I see. So actually this const cells that we have here in line 24, could that be the generation? Or exactly. Some, but a poor representation, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a very poor representation. It's very primary, but still that's the generation. Awesome. So I'm going to rename this just quickly because I think it's a, it's a better name maybe than mm -hmm. cells. For sure. Generation. OK, 
Okay, that's cool already. Okay, yeah. so what do we next do next then? So you said another test case. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Let's um, give another it. Mm -hmm. It um, an uh, universe with one cell would remain empty after a tick. With one cell would. Well, would it become or remain? I guess well, become, it become empty yeah. after one tick. Yeah, that's a nice test. Mm -hmm. So again, okay. we create the universe with one okay. cell, whatever the coordinates, and then we expect that the generation to equal. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna call the. I'm gonna get the next generation. And yeah. then I'm gonna say expect generation to, yeah. to equal something like um, empty generation. Let's call it like that. Ooh, I see. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna pull out a variable for this then, I guess. Yeah, so empty, yeah. em empty generation. Mm -hmm. And I'll just put it up somewhere here yes you might uh, yeah people might notice that we have like the class on the top of the tests and so on um, that is a little bit ugly yeah um, but, but I like to do this because it makes the SC drafting things it makes I like this approach me too and it makes sense now because we're still searching and working on this class universe we're improving it in the moment when we'll see it's good enough, we'll move it away. Yeah, I like that approach. Cool. Okay, so we have this. Now let's make it pass. Uh, we added the cell. Of course, it would fail because the generation now is, it has a cell. So in tick, uh, we'd need to to do something and let's hack it a bit let's see say like that if this collection dot size or something like that equals one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think it's length length size something yeah. <laughs> equals one i see what you said what mm -hmm. you mean with hack <laughs> yeah brackets then return empty generation this ah, I empty, like that. empty generation yeah it's not this it's, it's, it's constant yeah yeah we probably need to refactor that at some point as well but of course it's okay. yeah still drafting okay that that sounds good so let's see what the tests are doing i've never done it from this acceptance test uh, kind of thing i always do like bottom up usually mm -hmm. right so i start from the components but i really like this because it forces us to really think what the terminology is and i'm yeah i really like this it's cool Okay. Okay. So two pass, three. Uh, yeah, three pass. Good. So we have this. Um, now let's let's refactor a bit. We have generation, generation, generation all over, and I'd like to refactor it in so such a way that we have the generation object extract from the universe and we'll use it in the first test as well so that co this collection the name of the collection let, let's rename that at 17 let's say let's rename it in uh, current generation right so this one would become current generation so i'm just yeah. gonna extract like a, a field exactly. uh, or do you want to rename the field or do you want to extract a new variable i would want to extract to a new class Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, Even though that class would contain just this collection for now. Okay, yep. I'm just going to uh, make the name a bit more clear. So current mm -hmm. generation equals this collection. Right. So um, class, ge would it be like the current it, generation it would or just generation? Generation. Yeah, generation. Mm -hmm. And then it would contain the collection. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to copy this for now. Mm -hmm. And we need to initialize it, and we need to have a a way to add. Yep, uh, just just cells. quickly. Um, 
this is a TypeScript thing I forgot about. So this is the same as having a constructor that initializes it. You can put this field here. Yep. Okay. okay, so is it like spawn cell or how would you call that method? Um, so with generation, uh, generation is not responsible with spawning. Probably there's a rule responsible for that. Maybe so, add? Sorry? Maybe add or something? Yeah, add so life? It would be add, add, I think it's better. Add cell. Okay. Add cell. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So I'm guessing this will look very similar to what we have done here. Yeah, exactly. So we need X and Y, mm -hmm. uh, which also need types. So these are numbers. Mm -hmm. So we have these ones. That makes sense. Um, do we have everything we need already? So empty, okay, this is a lie, obviously, because this is not a generation. There are many lies still in our code. Yeah. Does a generation need something to test if a cell is alive as well? Yeah, so we need a kind of comparison inside it. Um, so we have, ah. we have again two options here. We can make the comparison in the generation class or we can make another class that would deal with that. So if we go like immutable, uh, in a style of uh, functional programming, we'd like to have this as a, as a data structure and someone else would deal with this data structure and compare it whatever you give it. So uh, this is however, I don't know, how would you prefer it? Yeah, I don't have a strong, uh, let's use the, let's just use the equals or something. Okay, for now. let's use equals. Yeah. Uh, again, I think we're making like, uh, I'm writing all this code right now and I already get like, uh, what's the word? And nervous because I haven't seen the test run for a while. Yeah. So let's see, equals another generation. Mm -hmm. So other, which is also a generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just gonna return false for now because I want to see the pieces fitting together, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens in the tick can be extracted there. Ah, this one kind of, this current generation. Um, all of them, uh, everything. Ah, okay, so do you want to have a method tick on the generation as well? No, no, because tick doesn't do only that. So tick will call the generation, but will also apply the rules. We don't have yet rules. so. In this moment, I would just extract everything from there because it's only about generation. It's only about comparing generation. So I would extract everything from there to the generation class. And then I would call the generation class to, to do the comparison. So basically we, we move the responsibility from here to there. Okay. Um, that makes sense. So what is the a tinier step that I would do now? So I just take all the content here, yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ah, we would have a generation field, I guess. A universe owns a generation, I guess. Exactly. So this dot generation, I guess. Mm -hmm. And what would you call on it? Uh, we it's how, how do you call it? Compare equals equals. Equals, equals. yeah. Okay. And then we need to give it next generation. Some of next generation. Yeah. Okay. And then what would be the, so I guess make it somehow work. So let me put a private collection is going to become private generation, exactly. which will be of type generation. Mm -hmm. um, and we can use the same thing, new generation. So I guess we begin with an empty generation initially. Exactly. Um, this has a problem because loading, hmm. it doesn't have a problem. This allows us to get rid of the constructor. Um, this one becomes like this dot generation, and then probably not push, but add cell. Add cell. Uh, semicolon. Expected, ah, expected two arguments, but got one. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, X, Y. Yes. Mm -hmm, okay. And then next and... generation, we need to create that one. Mm -hmm. So what would be next generation? Um, so it's the, we need the if there. Right, so this kind, I'm just pasting the code back again here. 
Yeah. So next generation, this if, if the collection length equals zero. Ah, so this this generation equals, this is kind of the check you want to use. Ah, I see where you're going, I think. Yeah. Do you want to replace if this collection length with this yes. one? Yes, yes. Okay, I see. And then I guess it's the wrong way because if they are equal, we want to return yeah. the current generation. Mm -hmm. Now I see where you're going, okay. Um, Otherwise, we want to return the next generation. Yes. Okay. And since we current, uh, yep. Okay. So this would be generation. Let's see. This dot generation would be the current one. So what would be next generation? It's something that. Uh, so. Let's see. Where, where were we? So it's here in the test, I think we're fine, right? Expect generation to equal empty generation, yes. Uh, in the tick, the tick, and the, now we're in the generation. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's it keeps <laughs> if I'm following you, it keeps uh, moving you. Oh, so oh, I, I cannot scroll, you know. So ah. that that's something you interesting can, as a feature. Yeah. I can stop uh, following, yeah, but I'm not used to that. <laughs> Sorry. No, no worries. Um, uh, so we have the generation that just has equals it turns false, and in universe. The next generation needs so basically that's the purpose of tick to create a new generation. So let's hack it. Uh, for the first case, it would be just this generation. Okay, right for the first test case that makes sense. Okay. And current generation. Yeah, so previously we had the length check here, I guess. Yeah, and now here we don't at 25, I think it's not current generation, it needs to be an empty generation, right? Ah, okay, empty generation. Yeah, and then we just need to change it at line three, say that empty generation is yeah, a new... just new generation. Yes, I see a new generation. How hard can it be to type? <laughs> and empty generation is no longer of the any type, but now it's of the generation type. Yeah. Um, so we're saying const current. Okay, I see. So if the current ah, so if the current generation equals the empty generation, I think this is what we want to. Ah, oh no, not equals the empty no. generation because it's a one celled gen. Okay. If current generation equals the next generation, this will always be true at the moment. Yeah. So how do we get get this uh, unstuck? Unstuck. Yeah, it's always true because here current generation means the generation that we created. So here we were just wanted to say to, to see if the current generation has just one cell. That was the idea, right? Yeah, that was. Ah, yeah. Let's hack that maybe. Yeah. Maybe for now, um, num alive cells or something. So if the current generation has just to get to working again, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Let's so do that. if if the current generation has a certain amount of alive cells which is one, then we return the empty generation. Otherwise we return, let's just say current generation. The next generation is not being used anywhere. Yes. Yes. So number life cells doesn't exist yet, but we can um, add it and we can say something like get number life cells. So this is like a getter syntax. Yes. Um, being a number uh, and then well, actually, let's not use the getter for now. Too many things are moving at once in my head, so I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to do the smaller things. So this is get number life cells, get number life cells. So this is now getters and setters, but anyway. Yeah. 
and then we just say something i guess return which we had before this collection dot length i'm missing my uh intellij uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, refactoring right i know it's very manual i agree so that's i probably i'm not used to that that much and i get stuck a bit into the concepts to that we extract manually and yeah, I need I, a different mindset, a shift in the mindset in a way. Uh, I, I see what you're saying. I, I feel the same sometimes, especially if you have unfamiliar languages or tools, you notice that it takes away from your like capacity in your brain, right? And consequently, your normal problem solving skills are not that good. I find that, especially in legacy code bases, you have this all the time where you just want to solve this problem, but then like, you dive into other problems and so on. Yeah. So does this, this work? Pass. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for it, but I think this should hopefully work now. Yep, that passes. Ah, although it passes only one, we're running the other one still. One failed. Uh, right, because we our assertions are no wrong, um, because we are expecting there to be the generation to contain something and this one isn't a, an array anymore. Mm -hmm. So I guess we would say something equals. Yeah, equals. Ah, yeah. ah, I see where you're going. Okay, so you want to say basically we are expecting the one generation. Yeah, the generation to equal like generation. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I see. Although we never defined this first yeah, generation. Yeah, well, we don't, we need to, we can define it here. So it, uh, can, can I can I yeah, sure. do Go. this? So we have to do something like next generation. Mm -hmm. uh, who was it? Add or mm -hmm. add? Cell, cell, I think. Yeah. Uh, what? So just uh, coordinates. So I, I will do it like that. Right. So you would create, I see. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for you because uh, syntax const next generation equals new generation, right? And then mm -hmm. we kind of create it and we add cells to it. Yeah. Zero zero one zero, not ten. Hmm. Um, one one, and so we have the the next generation, and then kind of what you want to say is. Um, expect next generation generation equals uh, generation. Yes. To equal uh, uh, to be truthy, I think is the image. Sure. Truthy. Okay. Yeah, because JavaScript and its notion of true and truthiness, so <laughs> type yeah. progression basically. Okay, that is cool. Um, that makes sense. So although the names are a bit weird now, because this was actually the expected generation, I guess. Yeah, let's call it expected generation. Generation. Two equals, and then this one is the next generation. And so this should make this task pass, I think. And we need to refactor the second one as well afterwards. Mm -hmm. We need a Maybe lot of refactoring. Yeah. <laughs> a block remains a block after one tick fails because it is not truthy but false. So this means, well, let me rerun them in the meantime, but it means that basically, ah, because to equal is currently implemented as return false. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we check if one generation equals the other? We return true. Okay. Will this not break the other test though? Ah, oh, no, because we no. checked the lib. Exactly. I see. It's just hacking all the way. <laughs> if we can yeah. hack in the production code, that means we don't have enough tests. So we need to add more tests to force yeah. the code. I like that mindset a lot. It's a, a, a nice way of phrasing it. <laughs> okay, so now the tests are passing. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so I see here in the in the second test that we have. Uh, let let me show a bit. So I I have 
this first one, lines 35 to 39, this is the uh, mm -hmm. initial generation. Then this is the, the the next generation, and then this is for 43 to 47, the expected generation. Mm -hmm. Now this, what I would like to do is simplify this in a way, so that whenever you create a new generation, you don't need to do all this spawn cell, add cell, yeah. whatever. Ideally one method or something. Yeah, so maybe just give it the coordinates in a row. Yeah, I like that idea. So we would expose the idea of this. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, and yeah, and also the fact that via the generation we spawn the cells and then we make expectations on it is, feels a bit weird as well. Um, yeah. Let's get away from the at one cell, spawn cell, I guess, but maybe yeah. we can call, have a method on the generation which is like at cells for now. Exactly. So that's what I was thinking. Instead of having a, just one at cell, I have something like so add cells. Uh -huh. So here it would be something like this, right? Yeah, a list of number number. Yep. Yeah. But then a list of this, basically. Yeah, I'll let you. Uh, yep. Yeah, let's do. Oops, sorry. I'm just. Fo I'm still following you. <laughs> let me stop. Stop that one. Okay. Cool. So. Add cells, so you want a list and then you want to add all of them at the, at one time at the collection, right? Yeah. So we can say that the collection should be a new collection to which we concat all the new ones being added. Mm -hmm. Collect. And so this one is just cells for now. And we're going to use my favorite type, <laughs> um, cells. So this collection, this collection concat. So we add all of the cells at once. I like that. So I'm guessing we can make use of this method already when we call this one here. Yeah, because it's very long. And I yeah, like I it. agree. So the and maybe we can even have a constructor that allows us to call it later on. But yeah, yeah. So it's like a, a list of lists. So zero zero. Okay, yeah. Had we had refactoring tools, this has, could have been done in a minute or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> like just extract a few methods. But we're in editor world and not an IDE world, I guess. Yeah. And this one is add many cells, basically. So add cells. This should allow us to get rid of these four add cells. Mm -hmm. mm, that I like. Should pass. Okay. And. What do we do about this universe initialization? Shall so we just give we, it an... We, yeah? I'd like the universe to have uh, the opportunity to to, to give it uh, an initial generation. So if you mm. let me, it's something like universe... Oops, uh, yeah, I'm still following you. <laughs> Sorry. I was still following you, so I'm yeah. at 39. Um, I'm saying universe... Um, something like set generation. I don't know if it's set or uh, because you, the universe can have only one generation at a time. Mm -hmm. So I would do something like this and then uh, nice. I would have something like uh, this generation here. Oh, I see. Oops. So I have this one, but mm -hmm. this is not expected. This is initial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we add the cells and mm -hmm. I'd like to add this one. Nice. Okay. So we need a set generation method, I guess, if you yeah. uh, give that a try. So, yeah. so this one should be here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Here I have a generation. And I need something like, I don't know if this works. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay, I don't need this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, this should work. 
Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so this generation equals the next generation. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So we get rid of all the menu like line by line kind of things. Mm -hmm. Um, this one doesn't work anymore. We're using here spawn cell. Yeah, that is true. We can easily f mitigate this, I guess. Set generation, new generation. And then, yeah, if we had a constructor that would simplify it, I guess, because we know this is not going to return anything, I guess. Uh, s wait, so for new generation add cells mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. i mean i know what you're saying so i need to do something like yeah mm -hmm. okay and i'm doing this yep that looks good i don't know if all the syntax is right yeah um the generation here it's it's got type inference uh, so what we can do is oh it does mm, okay mm -mm -mm -mm. so this should make it work now although we have two generations now so this is like um, initial generation, I guess. See, if it goes further uh, th that down. That was have, yeah. Uh, something was yeah, yeah. Actually, this would be next generation. Yeah, exactly. I didn't see that. <laughs> Again, ID stuff. I, I typically, idea would show me in a different way, or even uh, even Visual Studio would show it a lot more clearer that hey, you gave the same name. Yeah, exactly. I think they announced uh, for uh, IntelliJ at least that they want to have support for collaborative programming as well. So I'm waiting desperately for that. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Um, okay, that makes sense. So now we have all this working, I guess. So the tests are passing, which is really nice. I have two refactorings I want to do, right? Yeah. I don't expect that we will set a new generation on every universe. So I would like to have it part of the constructor that you can exactly. just pass in exactly. the generation. Okay, yeah. so let's do this. So in the universe, um, instead of having a set generation, what we can basically do is another way of writing this one. It's TypeScript magic. So we can say a constructor where there's a private field generation with a default or with an... Actually, if you always pass it in, we don't need a default one maybe. We can always say you always have to provide one. I would that say, waits. yeah, that there is... So I don't know, there can be a universe that now there's a decision, a design decision. Mm -hmm. If we make a universe with no generation, will it have by default an empty generation or do we always give, need to give the, the universe a generation? It's just a decision that we might need to take. So what do you yeah. think? Mm. Both are fine for me. I don't see. I see the benefits of both. I don't have enough data to make like a a decision on which which one is more important. Um, since we are refactoring an existing code and we didn't pass anything in the constructor, right? It forces us to be a bit more explicit, I guess. Mm, okay. So I'm just gonna not default it, right? So all I will say is universe gets a generation. So now here we can give the we make the universe now after the generation. Um, I'm still following you. One second. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you noticed that one. Um, so we make the universe with the initial generation. And we can do something very similar for the, um, for the generation afterwards that you can provide the cells in the constructor as well. And down here, uh, we have something very similar, which is we make the universe after the generation um, and we pass in the generation instead of calling set generation. Okay, so we, we discovered or kind of worked out a new concept now fully, which is the generation concept. So this should be passing, uh, which is cool. So for the generation, we can do the same with the constructor. Yes. 
would you so again would you like to have a default here or would you force someone to always specify the cells in the generation i i think you can have an empty generation so that's useful it, and it will be very useful for the uh, following tests as well and, and for the logic of the tick so i'd like nice. to be able to have an empty generation yeah that's cool otherwise you need to create builders and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff yeah that's true so zero zero so now we have a new generation here which is nice because it allows us to inline this generation and we can do something very similar up here so instead of calling add cells we can put it all into this new generation call we can get rid of it and down here in the expected generation we can do exactly the same i would argue mm -hmm. and that probably makes it a little bit better to read would you like to inline initial generation i think what so do you think it yeah. Okay, let's in yeah 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 let's inline this one again in an yeah. id Very... id you could just <laughs> Yeah, that looks much better than what we had before. I think now it's coming together. So we make a new universe with a new generation. The next generation is after a tick um, and we have an expected generation. I guess we can inline the expected one too. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we expect, but this is the expected one. So actually that's, that's the wrong way. We want the next generation to equal this one expected yes. one mm -hmm. and so now let's see oops but i got the parenthesis wrong oh yeah it was in the other and i think i you need, need to one. add mm -hmm. Maybe one more even? Yes. No, we, here we go. Okay, cool. Now I like this test. We have a new universe which consists of a generation. We make the next generation and we expect the next generation to look in a certain way. That is really cool. And it takes away all the ideas of what equality means and puts it into the domain, right? Or into the class itself, which... Exactly. Awesome. And I'm going to follow you now. Yeah. Uh, do I need to wait for the test run? I think they didn't pass yet, all of them. Yeah, we didn't see them pass yet. That's one I, is I, failing. Something is, which is the second one down there, and it's failing because we expect the next generation to equals the empty generation. Is this now because we are? Yeah. Why is the second one failing? Let's think about it. So we make it, first of all, I would like to inline this one just to remove the mental overhead as we did in the other mm -hmm. thing, right? So we have a universe, which is a new universe, which then did something crazy. So it doesn't, it doesn't work in the universe class. It says except expected an empty array and you, we have a, an array with one. Mm -hmm. oh, so I guess in universe, in the universe here we did something wrong if current generation has one we turn so this doesn't work probably current mm -hmm. generation when you're doing this constructor in universe does current generation still get i think we need to add this in the constructor right Mm, it does that automatically. Well, then some. Ah, oh, I know what might be the culprit. Maybe there is a chance, if it's similar to Python, that this initializer would not set it all the time. Uh, yes. Would would be the same identity, maybe. So let us just try something because I don't entirely know which one is accurate. But if we say this dot collection equals. or you know like an empty thing just to make sure that it's not the same identity and like we do mutation and crazy stuff 
Mm, ah, yeah, and then private collection is obviously optional. <laughs> it might have not been that, but maybe it is. Okay, that was not the problem. So what if we do that manually here? Would it be the same, like saying? I know the problem, I think. Okay. Because we are not using our custom measure. We're expecting the two, if you scroll down to the to the tests. Yes. Um, we are using the just measure, but we have an, our own equals method, right? So we have to have say like expect next generation equals Mm. Yes, that's the one. Because otherwise it's doing exactly. Oh, I see. So that one is not calling equals. Yes. Okay. To be truthy. Oh, to be truthy. Yeah. JavaScript. So I need to add here the end to be truthy. Yep. That's the expectation because we want this method to kind of and is it the same? No, we want to say that it's a different. Ah, yeah, yeah, to be truthy, you're right. Okay. Okay, so now that works, I guess. That is good, right? So all the tests are passing. Cool. Um, and then let me clean up just this hack because I think with the collection, right, we created this boiler plot. Uh, Plate code, yeah. which we don't need. So that's just gonna add this one back in here. So we initialize it. And I think we can even get rid now of the any type. Um, and we can have a type definition here, which we can call, what you call it, cells maybe, right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna use cells any. And every place where we have any, we can put cells now just to put all the any's in one place. <laughs> and stop spreading them all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I think the type would actually be something like this. So it should be a tuple of number and number, and it yeah. should be a list of that one. A number, number. And now I think that should make TypeScript happy. And finally, we got rid of the any type. Okay, I think uh, that looks much better. So what's the a good next step? I want to see the light, the red light, the, the green light. Green light. I want to see it too. That's true. Fail. Uh, Argument of number is not assignable to parameter of type cells. Oh, this is probably because I was typing. Let's, oh, why is it taking so long? Let's mm, run this again. I see. Yeah, I think. The interesting thing is um, the trade-off between using an IDE that you're familiar with and using something that gives really fast typing. When you take away the really fast typing and like test running from this tool, which was supposed to do really fast things, you have the worst of both worlds, I guess. Um, number, number, the type number is not assignable to number type array. number. Maybe this is TypeScript actually telling us something useful. Yes, it does because we are, when we create this new generation with one cell, it's an array of numbers, but it needs to be an array of, you know. Mm, okay. So types for the rescue. <laughs> yeah, so if we take away like the, um, the fastness of this tool, uh, because the test running takes so long, because my machine melts, um, we have yeah. neither the good tooling nor the good feedback, which is, I think, a nice learning. Uh, but th obviously you need much better computers that you'd expect when you need to do remote pair programming. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I saw. And this is passing now. Nice. So now we have the types. Okay, okay cool. Great. Finally uh, back to the domain, um, I guess. Yeah. So another thing about domain, if we call this a block here in the in the name of the uh, in the name, mm -hmm. right? And this is identical to this because this is a block. Mm-hmm. So what I would do, I would extract the, this, I guess. Yeah, yes. and say a block. Yeah, and, and, and call this a block. So this is um, 
block. Right, so we expect the next generation to be a block as well. I see what you're saying. So this one is a block. I'll move it uh, in a very mm. manual way to the top. Oops. No? Yeah, there's just like a double equals, I guess. It's a double equals. Line 38. New generation equals new generation. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, I can fix that if you don't mind. Um, I will just delete, delete one of the new generation. Yeah. So that way you can focus on the what you were going to write. So you want to say that in line 46, that a new mm -hmm. universe made from a block generation or from a block. Yeah, and this is, is block. A, nice. In now, the next generation equals a block. Cool. So now uh, I think I'm missing some parentheses. Ah, oh, there's one too many. Yep. Yes. So now I, I can have the setup of the test here and then I can focus on this. Hey, I have a universe uh, with a, that has a block, the next generation. After I take it, I expect it to be a block, a lot clearer. I think so, yeah, that's nice. And one could argue, maybe we want to reuse it to move it to the top, the block thing, but maybe Ex we also don't need to do that. Exactly. Now, now I don't know. It could be, a, I, I could do both. Uh, but personally, I prefer to leave it here because it's okay. closer. So I call this uh, uh, space, vertical space. Mm -hmm. Now it's the idea that where you initialize something should be closer to its usage. So I use it here. I can see it here it's easier to, to, to navigate through the code. Yep, the distance, I guess, right? The vertical distance, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Okay, I guess we need a new test case after all that refactoring work. Exactly. So now I think we can go to the, um, to the other more complicated uh, structure. We have implemented like the death <laughs> that mm -hmm. uh, a cell dies. And basically with all these examples, what we're doing is that we are constantly hacking in with the rules, but by giving mm -hmm. examples, not by thinking about how to algorithmically create them, but just giving examples and forcing us to, uh, to have these rules created in a, uh, an evolutionary approach. Mm -hmm. So the second thing we can do is to have a universe with two life cells that are neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because if you have just one cell, then it's just one cell and it dies. But if you have two cells, then already you can introduce the concept of neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I would say that a universe with two neighboring cells mm -hmm. would become empty after a tick. Okay, I like that. Um, let me copy this test case, yeah. which we have here. A universe with two neighboring cells would become empty after one tick. Mm -hmm. So this is zero, zero. Yeah. And so let's just use zero, one. Maybe. Exactly. So we would expect this test to still pass. I believe. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. No, no, it won't pass because the the length is two. Ah. And it will fail. That's good. Also, I like really um right like if you come from this, it's really important in which order you put the examples that you put in there. Like that's mm -hmm. the black magic or the voodoo basically that goes on where you know in which order to pick. Um. Yeah. Exactly. So when working on real life examples, I try to to focus, especially with business analysts or product people, I like to focus when coaching them to, to, to come from simple to complex. It's simple from the, the business point of view, from the user's point of view. And this is the case here. We started from something very simple, or simpler than having an empty universe. 
then you start introducing one concept at a time. I think it's the same when you have like a, a, a new business feature and you want to say, look, I want to do this, then add this, add this, add the next one, add the next one. What's the simplest feature? That's always a difficult thing. I think you can apply this very with a lot of success in, uh, in business mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, that's a good point, definitely. Um, so the tests are passing, <laughs> unlike we expected. Hmm. I guess this is because our equals function does do nothing but return true. Oh, yeah, indeed. So let's force it. That's fun, right? So mm -hmm. our, our equals always returns true. And le that means that we need to do something, another test with something not to be truthy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's easy. It could we could definitely say that the next generation is not the initial generation, for example. Exactly. So let's create a test saying that whatever next generation is not uh, after. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you want a new test or just an additional expectation? No, let's make a new test because okay. it's 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 nice. Okay. It. And what would the test roughly say? I just, think it, just as yeah. you said, an, an initial. Do we need to go through the entire tick, or can we just make two un uh, two generations and compare them and say that they should not be the same? Also, we're comparing uh, two generations. Let's see. Uh, well, so, two generations with different uh, cells. Yeah, the the test I'm thinking about would be like expect. Yeah. Uh, empty generation equals block generation or block mm. to be falsy. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. That that's that sounds great. Empty generation to sorry equals. This is the trick. Yeah. <laughs> not to go, to be done wrong. Uh, block. So block is not defined here. I guess we have mm -hmm. to move it uh, up a bit uh, to be truthy. <laughs> I like the concept of truthiness. Like in this statement was tr somewhat truthy. <laughs> somewhat true. Um, well, not okay. to be truthy. Expection. Huh? Uh, to not. Yes. Thanks. Dot not to be truthy. This is kind of how you do the inversion invitation inversion okay and i'm just going to pull the block out now which will increase the vertical space a bit but yeah yeah that's just fine okay perfect i would expect that people would uh, use that and it's a lot better to say block than say something else like, or if you go back to wikipedia page there are other names like us that, that i don't know beehive and so on so mm -hmm. if you have this in your domain knowledge uh, list of terms it will help a lot mm -hmm. okay this should be failing now yeah let's run it or yeah i think it is running it is running yeah we get like the test running experiment of like a, a code base, right? That is like 10 years old and has thousands of tests for, for tests. Exactly. Here we go. So now it's not true, of course, and we need to make something. Yeah. So we can either go very far away, very deep into this rabbit hole and really implement the everything. I don't know, we could do that as well. Can we? Yeah. We could do it, although I think we can evolve the equals method as we go along as yeah. well. That was my initial idea that we could do that going into that rabbit hole, implementing everything, but we could just do just in time, just as how we about, need. How about we just begin with get num cells? Like if the cells have the same amount of life cells, then yeah. they are the same. That would be a yeah, first that, one. That would be first one, although it wouldn't be enough to make this test pass, right? Or? Mm, no, it, empty? it would, yeah. it would, it would, yeah. Mm. Okay, so how about you go to um, just switching the roles a bit? Yeah, you change the that method, that empty method to check if this dot get number life cells is equals to other get number life cells. 
for me it's a bit slower so now it's loading the the auto completion, auto -completion yeah mm -hmm. so for okay and it does crazy things as well yeah yes it auto yeah i wonder how much bandwidth we would need to get like the video stream working well and the synchronization for me it's fine because we have good internet very good internet so i have fiber optics to my door so i have no issue with that i've got copper which runs up this chimney <laughs> so i might be to blame <laughs> yeah well no it works really well for copper i think okay so if we say if this get normal lives get alive cells um equals other that get normal life cells i guess uh, now we can use the javascript equals which is just three equal signs yes so equals what was the thing we create oh, uh, other dot got a num yeah good number life sets come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry okay so if this return true then return false is that the thing? I think so. And that should make all our tests pass for now, which means we can focus back on if they pass, yeah. <laughs> which means we can focus back on the business domain, which I like. Mm -hmm. Although actually, if two generations are the same is an important concept. And I like that we are also driving that out as we evolve. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a test for that yet. That's true. But we have one which just says if they are the same or not, like Mm. Received faults. Two neighboring cells would become empty. The question is if it used like the last, like, uh, last state again. So I'm just going to run this once more. But okay. I think the logic looks okay. If this get number life cells equals the other number life cells, we're saying they are the same. Otherwise, we say they are not the same. And here we say an empty generation should not be truthy but it's failing again and it's failing ah, ah it's now failing our two neighboring cells which is what we wanted to see fail so now the equality is wrong right we implemented more of the equality so our previous test case that two neighboring cells will become that is wrong because our logic still has a hardwired one in terms of the length yeah so here's an inverse with two neighboring cells will become empty after one Take this because the implementation of the tick. Okay, yeah. So yeah. now I think the tick needs to be changed, right? Yep, yep. I think so too. So here we just need to call. Uh, I think we can. We should remove this. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, the idea is that tick needs to create a new generation. That's its purpose. So we have a current generation, and I think we need to have something like, and it would need to do something like, to, like calling uh, the rules and creating that. Now mm -hmm. I know. I think now it's a bit too premature to do that. We don't need that yet. We can still hack it. But I'm. Uh, I need to look a bit, and maybe I need some help to understand how to hack this. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way I could see right now is not just if the number of the life sets is one, but if it's two as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking now. This should make the test green. Because one and two and all these things already are exist there in the domain. What is really cool is that actually what we can see here already, um, the business rules, right? Or like the the one that you said you can start from the bottom up or top down. Mm -hmm. And so from the bottom up, one of the things in there, if you do it bottom up, is you realize that what is really important for a cell, um, whether it will be alive or not, is the number of neighbors regardless of the position. And so the cool thing is we now come from the top and go to the bottom. We don't worry about all of the positions, exactly. but we still make the same uh, deductions which is really cool exactly that's a very good point because i always am annoyed when i see people doing these code treats and they focus so much on on, on position 
which is not really important because Conway's Game of Life doesn't say anything about position. It says about num number of neighbors. That's all. And yeah, there will be also, I remember now, there will not just be the get number life cells, but I guess this is the next test case you want us to write. There will also be the case whether the cell itself is alive. So the function for if a new cell is alive or not is based on whether it is alive and the number of neighbors. Exactly. We don't have that here, but I think you will drive us there with your experience. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the idea, exactly. Cool. So now we have all all the tests passing. Um, we could go on a bit on this. Uh, I maybe the next test will pass, but mm -hmm. we already. So now when you do TDD, there is this question. You know, I was forced by gen by the test on universe to create a test, to create an implementation of generation. But now the question is, would I like to test generation through universe? Or would I like to add some tests to generation, even though the logic could be duplicated in the tests. So I would test double that, but have independent micro tests on generation. So that's always a question and it's a thing about style. I think um, classicists would never have this test on generation. Mm -hmm. uh, they wouldn't think about that because it's good enough. Uh, and maybe even though if they would try these kinds of tests, they would delete them afterwards. But if you'd look at, let's say, just coverage only on generation, we only mm -hmm. have this test. And it, it's just one part of the coin. It says that something is not equal to something else, but we don't tackle what is equal with what. So what I feel like or what I would do uh, is see it exactly as you said. So I consider myself more of a, a classicist, right? And mm -hmm. I try to avoid the mocking. Um, and I think about what we're doing is acceptance tests. So I think about the user interface and try to reach to the code that I can through the user yep. interface as much as possible. But sometimes, you know, as right now, I like to create temporary tests like the, the equals um, and then later delete them before we check this in and give it to someone else more of a helper to drive us the code. Because once we have the full, all the acceptance tests for the game of life with a different pattern, we can be quite certain that we're exercising all of the code paths and that our concept of equality is okay. Because otherwise, you know, and then I would probably go and delete those tests in the end. Um, mm -hmm. That would be my approach, but I mm -hmm. understand if we would, would like to also drive some tests for equality. I mean, I don't know, but my uh, feeling would be to leave the test as it is because we will need more tests for equality as well later on. Exactly, yeah. And then see them deleted once we have all the other patterns. Mm -hmm. So it's also a question about if we go larger scale, how would you do, how would you tackle this situation when you have uh, tests for different people? So if you have this, it's called the testing quadrants. So you have four quadrants. You have tests for business, tests for technology, uh, you have tests for uh, programmers like like unit tests and so on. And you have, in this case, text, uh, tests for business like the acceptance tests. I would like, but that doesn't happen that much, that also programmers would run these acceptance tests and look at them and consider them as part of their work and part of their world. But unfortunately, in big corporations, in big organizations, that's for the testers. That's for the analysts. That's for the business people. And they don't look at them. So that's why what happens is that you duplicate these tests. You start having unit tests, but also acceptance tests. Yeah, that's an interesting. I like that. I, didn't, I wasn't aware of this quadrant, um, although we mentioned only three things, I, I guess. Uh, so to me, so I wrote down because it's new to me, um, business, tech, um, programmer test, and what was the first fourth one? If it's a quadrant, I'll, I'll open but, the the image so that you well, nice. you won't see them. Unfortunately, I need to. <laughs> let well, me... if you just tell me the fourth one, then I I have it complete already. I'm gonna share also. So I am perfect. Uh, the the idea is to open the image. Ooh, it even has like 
business facing i like it yes 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 open image this is created initially by brian merrick and then lisa crispin added a lot on top of it and you have these four quadrants you have technology facing that have quadrants one and four you have supporting the team uh, quadrants one and two you have um, business facing quadrants two and three and critic product and four. So what we're writing now are tests that go into scenarios that are automated. So we're business facing and we're critiquing the product. This is how I feel. Well, some other people would say that these are examples. So it can be a bit tricky to identify if we are working in Q2 or Q3. Um, because here it says manual, you see. So these scenarios from here are more the scenarios that we do exploratory. Mm -hmm. So it it depends. We're two or three. Because so if we'd like to automate them, probably we're we're more on two. Although these scenarios here, initially how Brian Merrick wrote about them, though they were manual. But nowadays I think they're more automated because he wrote about this 15 years ago. So things change a bit. Um, so, okay, let's say that we're in two. So we have automated and manual. So we are supporting the team and business facing. We are in this situation. And if we have unit tests in Q1 that would also duplicate these tests, mm -hmm. then uh, it's not that good, right? Because you're duplicating your effort. So going back a bit on the tests, this test is business. Mm -hmm. but this test is unit mm -hmm. and I think it takes a lot of experience to understand that And but I always try to have in my mind in which queue am I here yeah that's a very powerful concept uh, thanks for explaining it I, I think it needs a while to settle in but it uh, resolves a lot of things I had in my mind before it's cool it's very old I should have heard about it but I haven't <laughs> So Unfortunately, <laughs> not a lot of people talk about it. Uh, there, I think there's uh, an old blog post from Brian Merrick, and there is there are a few blog posts from Lisa Crispin from seven or eight years ago. Uh, but also, she explained about this quite dense, uh, densely uh, at the moment. So, yeah, going back, uh, I wouldn't add a new test here because this mm -hmm. is just unit and I'd like to continue on the business facing. Yeah, I like that too. Cool. So we added the idea of neighboring here, mm -hmm. but we, we have, in fact, as you said, we're lying. We're lying because, well, we are, we are neighboring, but we only know by this, right? Mm -hmm. the, that there's one difference. We don't know what neighboring is. Mm -hmm. So we could try to continue with this and say, and add another test, like uh, three neighboring cells, what happens to them, and have that line uh, that f um, changes that oscillator. Where is it? The blinker. Yeah, yeah that's the name. Mm -hmm. That's the simplest oscillator. And I would try to do that because we already implemented death. Now we need to implement becoming alive. Mm -hmm. We have the idea of neighboring. We introduced that already. Um, but now this will force us also to have a valid output, something besides a still life like block. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. So what would be a good description for it? So we want to do an oscillator, basically. Exactly. Well, I would use again the domain name from here, the blinker. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see it, it's horizontal and it's vertical. So I would say something like um, a, a universe with a horizontal blinker. Ah, that's cool. That, would, yeah, because then you get the two states, kind of. Yeah, would become a universe with a horizontal blinker 
there's something very interesting that I tried once. Mm -hmm. And something that my help might help and it, it's kind of a test that it's kind of weird um, because you have a blinker you have only two situations so a, a easier test would be before that to have two ticks and consider mm -hmm. that you go back to the initial stage ah okay so it stays kind of the same yeah so it's kind of a still live test but hacking Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna skip the other test. Yeah. A universe with a horiz horizontal blinker would become, would stay. Yeah, would stay. The same. After two after ticks. After two ticks. Okay. Because th this is simpler to test. And I like that. You already create, I mean, here in, again, going evolutionary, you have the effort of creating the blinker. Mm hmm. And you just create it once in one structure, like horizontal, and that's fine. Then you, you you will reuse that in the future test. I see. Okay, so I'm gonna make a horizontal <coughs> blinker quickly, right? So we need three alive cells. Yeah. So at, let's use minus one, or actually let's not use minus because it's gonna be easier if we do just one, two, three. I guess a zero, one, two. Yeah, zero, one, two. That's great. Okay, and then we call tick twice. Mm -hmm. So we need two universes for that because we are not mutating. I'm not sure if, you know, because tick returns a new generation. Yes. But I think if you call tick. We can change the API probably because it's not super nice the way it is right now, right? Because now it would be like next gen next universe from the next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So already we see an issue with our code. Yeah. Second uni, uh, sorry, second generation equals universe dot tick. Something like that, right? Yes. And as you said, this generation, I'm just going to pull this out quickly, um, is going to be a blinker. Mm -hmm. e even more, it's an horizontal blinker. Oh, even better. So the horizontal blinker. And then we expect that our um, second generation equals, oops, to be true the Uh, another horizontal blinker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. And then obviously we call not universe, but next universe to tick. Yes, that's what I want yeah. to say. <laughs> Thanks. Good. Okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you uh, would you mind sh stop sharing the screen because then I think we have the time of the test. Oh yeah, let's do it. If that. only this was uh, would work in our jobs, right? With your real code in your job, <laughs> <laughs> half the time by fifty percent with one little change. Okay, so all the tests are passing, which is interesting. It shows us a problem in our design, so we could go into this, or we could figure out why this test is passing. No, I would expect it to pass. Th that's what I. I wanted to to show you in a way because this is exactly the same as a uh, still life. Ah, yeah, I see. That's cool. Yes, it's nice. Okay. So, so what but you do this now? this test helped us see that we're on the right path, and we already de defined the horizontal blinker. So we take the two of the first three lines, I guess, of. Mm -hmm. per 73 to 75, we could copy it to the next uh, test that was skipped. Mm -hmm. We can make it right afterwards. Let's... Yeah, and then we just need to define a vertical blinker. Mm -hmm. So I guess so... it's one, how is it? 
this one zero. I think it would be something like this, right? One is on X is always the same because it's the center, but then it's minus one zero and one. Exactly, yeah. And so we want to, what do we want to say as for the assertion then? We want to say that after one tick, so no longer two ticks. Yes. So we only need the next generation. Exactly. That the next generation. Equals to vertical blinker. Ah, I like that. And now again, we have the horizontal blinker. Oh, sorry. Something is red here. No, okay. Yeah, we have the horizontal blinker twice. So I would argue that we move both of the blinker definitions to the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, we can do that. And now the test, ah, yeah, and to be truthy, well, well, let's see. I'm gonna move these up first. And again, tick. here we go. So saving this should, what do we expect? That it fails or that it passes? Uh, it should pass. It's the same thing, the same issue we have with um, all of both of them have two, the number mm -hmm. of cells. No, no, they have three. Yeah. Yes. So if you go back here, where was it? Oh, because of our concept of equality, probably. Yeah. So it returns current generation in tick. Ah, but we uh, our idea of equality is if they have the same amount of cells, which is always true, right? Since we keep mm -hmm. keep yeah. this one. Yeah. So maybe we need to work on our concept of equality now. Exactly. So this is a moment where you, we are forced, I guess, to introduce neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So what would the, the test look like? I think the easy neighborhood. Hmm. On generations, uh, we, we need to define two generations that have the same number of cells but are not equal. Mm -hmm. So that would be a test. Like a test that has, I don't know, two cells 0, 0, 0, 1 and two cells mm -hmm. vertical. Mm -hmm. uh, zero 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 minus one i don't know but those generations are not equal i think this is what we need to add as a test i see okay that makes sense so i'm just gonna use this programmer test as you mentioned before or exactly the test. Mm -hmm. so we need to go deeper to make this test pass if you look at it it, it almost feels now like having a guiding test how um, Net price and Steve uh, Freeman are expressing in their growing domain object. How is it called? The, the Ghost Book. Growing object oriented software guided by tests. Guided by tests, yes. So the initial test starts more and more being a business test and a guiding test, and we need more and more to add unit tests to mm -hmm. make that one pass. Yeah, and I think like the easiest would actually be, right, I think, to, um, let me get this right, equals new generation parent, parent, parents, something like. Yeah, that that's even easier, I guess. Mm -hmm. One, yeah, what if we just have one cell? Exactly, it's, it's even better. Mm -hmm. I think there's also to be falsy, not to be truthy, but anyway, we have some bigger fish to fry right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the syntax is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, mm -mm -mm. So we have one failing. Yes, excellent. Which is what we would was it we're expecting because we yes. don't check the position. So what's the easiest way to get this to work? Well, I would argue we begin with one of this. We use if there is one cell. Well, we know already the first condition is that the number of cells needs to be the same. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of want to say, I guess, that is the code we want to write in the end. For all the cells, there should be a mapping. We should always find each of the cells in the other one, right? Everyone should be represented. Yeah. 
I'm going to do a hack for now because this is the easiest thing I could think of, which is just to make sure that if we have one cell at the moment, it will also force us to make this more generic in a second. Um, if we have exactly one cell, um, then we want to go through all of the ones in the get number live cells. So uh, if we try so mm. this dot collection, and then we can use, I guess, do we want to use for each? Yeah. For each. And then we have like cell. So each of them is cell. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is we can use some destructuring like this, I believe. So now this is just X and Y from the cell. Um, although maybe we don't need this right now. Yeah, Let's I don't see. know. Let's use cell. It, it's a lot more clear. Oh. And we don't even need the for each because we only look at one cell. So we just yeah. use the first one of the collection. And we want to make sure that this one, um, let's do it like this, const. Mm -hmm. So I'm again doing destructuring and pulling this out. And I'm pulling out x, this x, and this y. And then we have other x and other y, which is coming from other dot collection zero. Mm -hmm. Right, and then we could say something like return this x equals other x, not with an uppercase, sorry, not with a dot, other x, and and this y equals other y. Mm -hmm. Something in this should make it pass, I believe. And uh, it, it, this is very interesting because it relates a lot with uh, what Bob Martin was writing about. Per, um, Priority, priority premise. Ah, yes. Um, yes, it is. I see. So you, the, that the code kind of gets more generic, basically. Yeah, so this is the simplest way to, to look at it. And you don't even have a collection. You just have one element. Okay, we pass through the null and scalar and so on. We, now we have one element. And in order to make this work, we need to evolve the one element to a collection. Mm -hmm. And then to a collection of coordinates, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly so. And the cool thing is we can reuse the innermost code. Yeah, yeah. So something is not passing right now. Uh, receive true. So you, you already have, you also have two of, uh, not only one num oh. number of cells. So we should do the same if we have number of cells two and three, I guess. Um, yeah, also see, look at this, right? We always return true at the moment. So I guess what we really want to say is kind of flip this. If they are not the same numbers, yes. otherwise we never get to our code. Exactly. <laughs> And then if the number of the live cells is zero, and then otherwise we can, I guess, say true even. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the tests are saying. Yeah, for two and three, although we haven't written a test for this yet, and I'm expecting that this should fix all the tests, but maybe also I'm wrong. We'll see. They are all passing. Okay. Which... I would like to add another programmer test now, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Maybe we can switch the typing as well. So I'm going to follow you now. Let's add a new test where we compare the thing with two cells. So we have a generation with two cells, one of them being in a different position. So do you want to go? Oh, OK. So we're still we can generation. put it in this. Yeah. Uh, the, so generations. Um, we could just add a new expectation. Cells. Oh, you, you want oh. Uh, just an expectation? Okay. So I, I mean, like, yeah, you know, I don't really have a strong opinion, really. I kind of do, but uh, I'll leave it now. <laughs> That's cool. I kind of do. It's for the better good to focus on this now. Uh huh. So mm -hmm. is this good? Uh, no, not yeah. zero, 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 uh, one, zero, two. I don't know. Okay. So two are actually different. Exactly. 
since the first one is different already, it should still work. Because we are only inspecting the first one, I believe. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's different. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, the first good. ones are different. So, mm. if, because we are inspecting the first ones, it it's failing. So... Ah, yeah, and we have two alive cells. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, if we do this... Uh-huh. Uh, we have this collection again loading for the mm -hmm. i mean we could iterate with all the yeah the that's what group. i'm trying to do so for each element so let's new, not use for each because then the returning early won't work i guess mm. so if we if you just write like four or well, if you don't mind i can write the structure for you okay it's, it's a bit it's a bit, yep, yeah. one second for let I... Oh, okay, so it's basic JavaScript is not... Uh... There is better ways to do it, but I think, again, a, bit, a bigger fish to fry. I uh, already always prefer for if, uh, for each. I'm the same. I easier. usually use that all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is the structure you were going after, I guess. Mm -hmm. So... We have this and then who is this collection, but it's not of zero, it's of I. Mm -hmm. And this is it, right? This is, I guess we still only check the first one now. So we would have to do only if they are the not the same. Well, if we iterate why do we use just because we have only one return so it will always stop after the first invocation i guess but it's passing now oh i see i see what you're meaning what you mean mm -hmm. it's passing because we check only the first one mm -hmm. so then what would be the test to add Let's keep the second, uh, the first one be the same, I guess. Yeah. So the first one is the same, but the second one is different. Yeah. Let's run this. That should now fail again. Also, what is cool, right? Just an, another observation. The beginning was all about the domain and it, we took a lot of time designing the domain and like all the words and how they relate. Now where we have it, we actually dive into the details with these, as you mentioned, programming or unit tests. So this yep. is all about helping us and not the business too much what we're doing. They wouldn't, you know, they expect that we have it. So I like that. It's yeah. a different way of working, definitely. You, you start with the business. You always start with the business. So that's the idea. So, so here we just, we have this. So in order to make this work, I think if both of them are not the same, if they are not the same, both of the cells, then we return false. Otherwise, we can continue iterating, right? So um, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm yeah. going to just quickly write this. So if. So, okay. This is the concept of they are the same. So if they are not the same, return false. Otherwise, we keep on iterating. I think that should make it work. Yeah, I was thinking about not using conditionals, but it's good for now. <laughs> it's obviously horrible code, but <laughs> yeah, 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 you have tests on it. It's fine. You can refactor. Also, we need. To, I, I can already see a next test to write. Mm -hmm. The problem is that uh, with the cells, right? We have both of them, but we compare only the same position. Mm -hmm. But now this is working, and I would argue we can delete the special case for one alive cell now. So uh, one I refactoring would be to kill the get number life cells equals one and two and two exactly uh, and this one and fix the indentation can't work as we expected yeah that's true what's different 
Ah, probably, yeah. I, I think I know what. Is it? What is the test case that is failing? It is the horizontal blinker would become a vertical blinker. Well, that's true. So I think we're now on the good path because now the generation is doing what it should do in the first place as comparison, but we don't use the tick to generate the blinker as vertical blinker. Ah, we've written enough of an implementation for yes. the testing, I see. So we've written enough implementation for generation to help us write the implementation for the tick. Yeah, that's cool. Because now we need to think about how to change, how to transform the next generation from uh, of the universe in tick as being a vertical blinker. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point for sure. Yeah, so, how would we do this? So now it gets complicated a bit. Of course, we can still hack it continuously because we know it's a blinker. So um, oh, I see. It, it it waits a bit. So current ge current generation. Oh come on! Yeah, it's a bit of a leggy experience, eh? I don't know. If current generation get num alive cells equals three, then I would return vertical blinker. And I think you define this, but it's here, right? So mm -hmm. let's let's move all of those to the top so that I could use them. Although it needs to go below generation, I believe, because of hoisting, but... Ah, no, they are... It's empty yeah. generation block. Hmm? Yep, yep. And then get number life cells as a function. It's a function. Too much Python. Yeah. <laughs> I also like this hack in this case, again, we go back to green, it allows us to verify our assumption that we've done the right thing, thing you know what I mean? And that yeah. we didn't introduce a bug, okay. But something's failing, what's failing? Another test, because a universe with a horizontal blinker would stay the same. Previously it was... Mm. All right, so this isn't enough. The condition that it has just three cells is not enough. So if would be something like current generation equals horizontal or mm -hmm. horizontal blinker let's enforce a bit more the constraint mm -hmm. i like not going very deep into that rabbit hole of uh, yeah hacking uh, no of, of of looking at neighbors and how many neighbors and looking at cells and uh -huh. uh, how are, are they orthogonal and so on because that would take probably two hours uh -huh. and it's nice but i think it's not business it's just very deep implementation based on real programming language and i think anyone could do that so i'd prefer to have to to hack it until i cannot until I really need to implement it. And I mm -hmm. have enough proof of what I need to do with all these conditionals. Mm -hmm. So what's what's wrong now? Well, now the other test is failing. I would be failing, I guess. Let's see. Because Try. we also have, we have two, well, horizontal. If it is the horizontal blinker, we always start with the horizontal blinker. Once it becomes the vertical and once it becomes the horizontal. Yes. Oh, so we need this one, the other one. If uh, current generation equals vertical blinker was for come on, <laughs> we need to take yeah. a break. Definitely. Then return horizontal blinker. 
Okay, uh, no, like that. Oh, I can see like the the typing happening in slow motion now. Mm. Still typing things out. I think a, a break would definitely be good. Uh, horizontal blinker. Did you see the tests already passing? One passed and running. Yeah, that one second. Just renaming. One I think it did crazy things. Of the test was interrupted. It's running again now. Yeah. I had to restart it because it was running it with the middle of your typing and mm. so it did crazy things. Yeah, it's also cool because um, we use a technique we, technique which I, I can tend to like to call like expand and then shrink. Right? Mm -hmm. right now we're expanding kind of the implementation and it becomes weirder and then exactly. in the end we can shrink it back again. So then we yeah. can look for the places to refactor and simplify. So let's do a debrief of what we've done until now and then decide a bit. So That's we've, good. we've been pairing for a while. Um, so let's see, let's see what, what did you do? How did you feel about this session? Uh, what uh, did you like? What didn't you like? Uh, let's try both of us to answer these questions. Yeah, that's cool. Um... I think, what did I learn? I learned about this uh, quadrant that you showed me that was really valuable. Um, and I will definitely read more about it. I think I really got a feeling for this idea of like using the, the business side and the acceptance test to drive the implementation. Um, and it's the first time I'm doing the implement from the top to the bottom. Um, and usually like begin with the high level and go into the details. And usually I would uh, often begin with, as you said, like the number of alive cells. Then I would think about what does cell equality mean? What does generational equality mean? And kind of build it up until in the end it matches together. So this is for me the, the biggest thing. As on the tooling, I think what is um, interesting is, yeah, the delays actually made this really bad. So we talked about this earlier. The trade-offs between speed and having a good tool to do with the refactoring uh, is now instead of a win-lose or a lose-win mm -hmm. became a lose-lose. So we have neither of both of them. <laughs> yeah. What I find really cool is um, that although we never programmed anything together, we st can still talk about these things, right? So we can actually have like a, all this rich language and talk about the concept and be quite effective in problem solving. And although you didn't know TypeScript, it wasn't a problem. We thought about the problem and not about the programming language, I think. Those are the three main things, I think. How about you? Yeah, I think it it helps a lot having one of the the partners know how to how the language works and how the environment works. Otherwise, it's just losing time. I don't know a lot about type TypeScript. I used to do some JavaScript uh, a long time ago. This is a bit different. I still have been doing a few years back some uh, some JavaScript. Uh, but this is a, a kind of a mix between maybe C Sharp and JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done both of them, so that's why probably it feels a bit easier for me. Uh, I like the tool, the, the Visual Studio Code, because it helps you with this remote pairing without sharing the screen, and we can both e very easily switch. Mm -hmm. It's very nice from this point of view. It's not nice because I cannot have uh, very easy your tools. Like uh, for you, it's very easy to see the, um, mm -hmm. the completion, to see the tests and so on. So partially it's doing its work, but for what I've been doing until now with remote pair programming, I think it's the best I've tried. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal. It's not nice uh, to for lags, and it's not nice mm -hmm. for having the lack of refactoring. Yeah, that's true. Because we think about lines of text all the time instead of the higher level concepts, right? Which mm -hmm. is like extract method. These things have names, and we should be able to just make the tool do it. I agree. And it it doesn't help me with some situations like when I had a double the double name, the same name uh, put mm -hmm. in twice, it didn't show up like I would, I'm would. i used to in other IDEs. And uh, so it's not that helpful from this point of view as an IDE, but it's really helpful from the point of view of remote pairing. 
So again, as you said, uh, you lose, you win some, you lose some. I don't know. <laughs> um, as with the problem, I really liked this approach. I tried it. Uh, I I I used this uh, for a long time like that. I think we made some variations today, and in a way, we discovered naturally the the ideas of. The goss of growing object oriented software guide by test from Matt Price and Steve Freeman that you kind of have a, a guiding test that's business and then we go into programmer tests, into micro tests on these concepts to make the initial test pass. So even though we don't know it, we worked on something that they they discussed there quite a lot. And I feel Always that in this, in this way you, you keep focus on the business. You keep focus on your progress, and you're not going into that very deep implementation details that are important for us as programmers. But if we work in a business context, they're not that important. Yeah, that's a great great summary. And I think although we didn't <laughs> actually finish a complete program, right? Of course, I think yeah. we had still a rich discussion about the the, the problem at hand. Um, the yeah, preparing for like having the browser ready and showing things in the rectangles. Uh, that is all nice, kind of like mm -hmm. it could be used for a demo, right? But it's not really yeah. We haven't even gotten close yeah. to using it. Um, I think like w one thing I thought we would maybe be reaching we didn't but that's okay is the idea of using like a presenter pattern or something mm -hmm. decoupling actually they're calling the methods on the all the browser things and how do you test drive right, that the right thing is being output mm. um that's another different topic which is which is what i was going after mm -hmm. but um yeah. maybe that could, we could do next time yeah maybe yeah, that so would be excellent that, that yeah, would be so. a, a topic for for a next pairing uh, session I always start, uh, try to say focus only on one thing, mm -hmm. and I think this uh, this was a good start. Yeah, I think as, as well that we we could pair up easily. Sometimes, quite often, last uh, in last months, people ask me, "How do you pair up with these people? Uh, did you work with them? How do you, how do you do that?" And uh, it it feels strange, or it, it seems strange for many people that you can pair up with someone you don't know and still be kind of productive. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about your views about that. Why does this happen? Because you do remote pairing, you, you've worked in teams. How, how, why do you think that can happen? Or sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes you're very unproductive with some people when you do pairing. Mm, I think there's a lot about the concept, uh, context, right? Or like the, that, that everyone has. So the more shared context you have, the easier it is to do something. So if you, so for example, right? Like communication can never be perfect and it always relies on the context. The more shared context you have, the easier communication is, the, which is why doctors, for example, have like names for all the bones so that they don't always have to describe here, the mm -hmm. bone that is attached to the one from here and so on. Yeah. And I think, the way you reach out to people is quite interesting, right? You ask if people who are interested in, in doing with, uh, this with you on Twitter. So people need to have heard about you and they probably will know about most of the topics you're discussing or to some extent, although not everything. So I think you immediately, by the way you attract people, you don't get random programmers mm -hmm. from all over the world. You get a certain uh, kind of people from a community and I think it's reinforcing itself these connections and I think this is why we have a strong shared context right mm -hmm. and this is why it works in a work environment very often you work with someone who comes from a diff very different background especially if both one of you is new and then it might not work as well that's my theory it might be completely wrong mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah so so that's uh, that's a very good point that uh, you have a kind of a self-selecting audience and mm -hmm. I think people who watch this need to understand that it's not always like that. Uh, pair programming can be difficult, can be annoying, can be frustrating, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it can be quite messy sometimes. Uh, you need to, to take a break or, or sometimes even you have conflicts because of that. Yeah, I think it's the funny thing about pair programming, what I like so much is, is it's almost like it reveals those problems. You can choose to work together without pairing, 
right? And then you don't notice that you have the problems. So the interesting part is, is it better to discover early on via pair programming that you have these teamwork, trust issues, whatever, right? Or these strong opinions. With pair programming, you discover them quite way easier, whereas otherwise you might see flame wars on like pull request reviews, right? And this is not the same way of discovering or like it, it just takes longer. So if you value feedback, then or like learning a lot, then I think the pair programming is great. And what we haven't done, we went one and a half hours straight as well. So the advice I always give to my uh, to my mentees basically when they start out pair programming is to use a timer like the Pomodoro technique yeah, and take a break. Pause, yeah, pause breaks every 15 minutes. Go away for five minutes and breathe and see. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, what we've done is basically I think based on our experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Although I really could use a break now too. Yeah, but. yeah, that's what I said. In the in the end, uh, I said I, I couldn't type anymore. And I said, it's obvious that I need a break. So probably because I've, I do this and I'm, I'm used to that, I'm, I can take a break every one and a half hours. I wouldn't recommend that to many people. So your advice is very sane. Just take 25 minutes work, five minutes break, and then take a longer break after three sessions. That's the Pomodoro technique it works great. Also, because we're recording, sometimes you prefer to go and continue, but there are symptoms that you need to take a break. Mm -hmm. Start making silly mistakes. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. No, excellent. I really, uh, I really enjoyed this, uh, this session. Thanks for taking the time for doing all the work of the sure. setup. I just had to click some buttons, but you do all the composition of all the streams. So thanks for that. Uh, I learned plenty. Um, I'm going to ponder some of the things I learned and read up on it more. And yeah, if time allows, I would love to continue that and see how we can wrap it up. But I think for now, for today, especially, <laughs> yeah. we are quite through. Yeah, that's true. So thank you for for pairing with me and until next time have fun coding. Well, thank you.